स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so good afternoon. Today in this lecture, I am going to continue our discussion on the generalization of Euler-Lagrange equations. So, we will primarily continue our discussion that we started in the previous lecture, Euler-Lagrange equations. So, this is a continued portion of the previous lecture. So, in this case we are in this lecture we are going to do two major cases namely the generalization which involves uh, Euler Lagrange equation containing functions of several independent sorry several dependent variables, but only one independent variable and the other way uh, one dependent variable, but several independent variables. Right. So, let us look at these two cases we have seen generalization the first case was functionals containing uh, derivatives uh, of order higher than 1. Right. So, this is my second case. So, in this case we are going to discuss how to generalize Euler Lagrange for functionals containing containing several independent variables. Right. Euler Lagrange containing several independent variables, but, but one dependent uh, well several sorry several dependent variables, but one independent variables right. And then the second case will be the other way round. Okay. So, uh, so, in this case, we are, let, let me just you know give a brief example. So, for example, uh, let us look at the motion of a particle in 3D space. Uh, the motion of a particle the motion of the particle in space in 3D space will require us to track requires uh, us to track 3 uh, independent independent uh, well three components of position let us say they are given by x of t y of t and z of t which are the three components uh, all all as a function if a function of time t right. So, this is one such case where we have three dependent variables x y z and they are all functions of the independent variables uh, which is the time in our case. And we are going to see that uh, this also follows the standard case of the Beltrami identity uh, the, the, the example that I have just mentioned. Okay. So, let us now start building up uh, the, the background to, to figure out the necessary condition in this case. So, first we have to describe describe the space where this where this uh, uh, you know extremal is going to be taken. So, we describe uh, so, so we, we describe C of C 2 of T 0 T 1 or the set of all continuously differentiable functions up to second order within the interval t 0 t 1, uh, we describe this, uh, this space which denotes which denotes the set of the set of all vector functions the set of all vector functions q bar from T 0 to T 1 from T 0 to T 1 to R n. So, 
the, the, the domain of these vectors is picked up from the interval which is mainly the time t and the range is the, the all the components of this vector q bar which is in R n. Uh, so, so, where uh, each of these components of q bar are c 2 differentiable. So, where q k s are in c 2 of t 0 t 1 right. Okay, uh, with we well the moment we describe the space from where we we are uh, getting the vectors the vector functions we also have to describe the norm because uh, because that is how we are going to measure the difference when we calculate the variation of the functional. Okay, so, with with the following norm we describe the following norm as the norm of q the norm of q is described to be the maximum the maximum among all the components k from 1 to n the maximum among, among all the components of the supremum of the absolute value of q with respect of q k where the supremum is taken over all t from t naught to t 1 right. So, the, the norm is the maximum of the supremum of q k right. So, now let us consider the functional. So, consider consider the functional of this form j j q bar which which is denoted by the following integral from t 0 to t 1 l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot d t where where I I define my my dot the superscript dot uh, as the as the derivative operator with respect to the independent variable t. Okay, and and also that this l that I have described the the integrand of this integral, which is a function of these vector quantities, it's also smooth and has derivatives up to second order, right? Uh, so, so what I am just saying is L has continuous uh, continuous uh, derivatives continuous derivatives of well continuous derivatives up to up to second order continuous derivatives up to second order with respect to with respect to t comma q k comma q k dot right and and I have that k is from 1 to n right. Okay. So, so let 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 q naught and q 1 be in R n right. So, so now we while we are describing our functional notice that we also have to describe we also have to describe uh, uh, the the endpoints because we have a fixed endpoint case. So I describe my endpoint with this following vectors q naught and q one in R n, and uh, and in this case, my fixed endpoint problem becomes uh, is written as following: the fixed endpoint problem consists of finding my fixed endpoint problem consists of finding the extremal the extremal of j j uh, from the set from the set described by s where s is the set of all q bar which are c2 differentiable differentiable up to second order and has the following boundary condition q bar of t naught is q bar naught and q bar of t 1 is q bar 1 right. Okay. So, then let us also further describe the perturbation right. So, the perturbation of q bar let, let me say that this is q bar hat is q bar plus epsilon times eta bar. Right, so this is now perturbation in each of the components, uh, and and I describe 
so where where i described my perturbation function eta bar to be the following vector function eta 1 eta 2 eta n eta n which belongs which belongs to the set which belongs to the set h which is also equal to all such etas in c2 t naught t1 all such perturbation functions such that the perturbation vanishes at the end point right so whatever we basically described uh, for example the set uh, the set s the perturbation set h in the standard derivation of euler lagrange we have now extended it to describe a similar sets for the vector functions right okay so then uh, so then uh, now i am ready so the moment i have described my perturbation i am ready to expand my my integrand let's go back here i am ready to expand my integrand l uh, in terms of let us say if i have an extremal q bar i am ready to expand my integrand in terms of the extremal q bar using taylor series so if we were to use taylor series if we were to use taylor series uh, let us let us go to the next slide. So, for small epsilon, for small epsilon, the Taylor's, the Taylor series implies that I have L of T of Q bar, comma Q bar dot is also equal to L of t comma q bar plus epsilon eta bar comma q bar dot plus epsilon eta bar dot right so so where the dot represents the derivative with respect to the independent variable t so we can now start expanding using taylor series so this becomes l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot plus epsilon times we see that we have the following set of terms now notice that we are dealing with vector quantities so we will have n terms one for each components of the vector so we we'll describe it in the form of a summation from k from 1 to n and each of the components follows the standard expansion of the taylor series in the standard derivation of euler lagrange so eta k del l del q k plus eta k dot del l del q k dot right so and and that is it and then we have the next set of terms are order epsilon square right ok so which means which means that the variations delta j is given by j of j of q bar hat minus j of q bar and we just replace the respective integrals and taking the necessary cancellations we are going to be left with the following integral which is the leading order term integral from t0 to t1 summation eta k del l del q k plus eta k dot del l del q k dot k from 1 to n right and let me call this times dt plus order epsilon square terms right ok so then the next step of finding the extremal in this particular case is to now reduce is to try and change this integral in such a way so that we can pull out these perturbations func fun functions eta k and to do that uh, we we again further uh, use tail, use uh, integration by parts right so well but before that we have to understand that each of these represents each of these eta case they represent the component of the perturbation vector function so so well of course we must say that the necessary condition the necessary condition for q bar to be an extremal is that we must have delta j 
of eta comma q bar is equal to 0 right. So, what what I have is let me call this as let me call this we need to name certain equations. Let me call uh, this particular equation as 1 in the slide 1 and in slide 3 I am going to call this relation the necessary condition as 1 prime that we need to obey right. So, now So, now what we have is the following we need to figure out the Euler Lagrange equation satisfying 1 prime. So, to do that uh, we need to we also want to highlight the fact that the Euler Lagrange equation for this n component problem is slightly more complicated, but we can resolve the issue as follows right. So, 1 prime is more complicated more complex right then el equations for one dependent variable case but uh, we need to but we carefully select carefully select our perturbation eta prime which is in our set of perturbations functions h right. So, what we do is the following we consider we consider the following perturbation consider the perturbation uh, let us say eta 1 in h 1 right where eta 1 where where my set h 1 is the set of all uh, all. So, you have a scalar here the set of all perturbations eta comma 0 comma 0 and so on such that eta of x 0 is equal to eta of x 1 is equal to 0 right. So, eta satisfies the only non 0 component also vanishes at the boundary. So, here we are considering a perturbation with all components 0 except the first one right. So, certainly this perturbation is in uh, is also belongs to our perturbation set h which is this one right. Now, if we are to use this particular perturbation we see that our Euler Lagrange equation reduces to the one dependent variable case and the dependent variable being q 1 right. So, then so what have I said so far. So, what is being said is for for this particular perturbation in h 1 it implies that 1 prime reduces 1 prime reduces to d d t of del l del q k q dot minus del l del q 1 uh, del q 1 dot minus del l del q 1 which is equal to 0 right. So, that is my that is my Euler Lagrange equation with respect to the first variable uh, for the choice of perturbations that we have just chosen right. So, so that is my necessary condition right ok. So, similarly, similarly we can choose perturbation for other components. So, similarly describing describing perturbation sets sets for other components we are going to look we, we are going to find that each of the components. So, we can repeat this procedure like we did for the first component to the second, third so on and we are going to get the following set of Euler Lagrange equations. The first Euler Lagrange describes uh, describes the extremal for the first component. The second Euler Lagrange equation describes that for the second component. right and so on so forth the nth Euler Lagrange equation satisfies for the nth component right and we are going to see that this is a system of n. So, system this is a system of n second order 
second order uh, second order differential equation uh, for for n unknowns second order differential equations for n unknowns where the unknowns are q1 q2 qn which is the necessary condition for our uh, for our uh, generalized case with multiple dependent variables okay so we have found euler lagrange which is a system of euler lagrange equation okay so let me just recap so far what we have said in the form of a theorem or or a result so the theorem says so we have theorem 5 the theorem says let let j from c2 of t0 to t1 to rn be a functional such that j of q bar is equal to integral t0 to t1 l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot dt so this is my functional where where my q which is given by this following vector uh, where q is this following vector and and l has this function l inside this integral has continuous derivatives up to second order with respect to with respect to t q k dot well q k and q k dot right for each k from 1 to n right and then further we describe the set of all extremals to be the set containing vector q which is c not c 2 of t 0 t 1 such that q bar of t naught is q naught bar and q bar of t 1 is q 1 bar right and these all belong to R n and further we describe uh, well we we continue by describing the set of perturbations as h but then the result is then q bar is an extremal q bar is an extremal of j in s if my following set of equations are satisfied following set of equations are satisfied where k is from 1 to n right ok so then let us look at some examples so the first example uh, well here is an extremal so we need to extremize extremize j of q bar which is integral from 0 to 1 q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square minus 1 plus q 1 square plus q 1 q 2 times times d t right. So, we see that in this case the functional is has an integrand which has two dependent variables q 1 and q 2 and both depend on the independent variable t. So, if we are to find well let me also provide the boundary condition. So, where q bar of 0 is q 0 and q bar of 1 is q 1 ok. So, then to find the extremals we have to write down two Euler Lagrange equation the first one being. So, before we do that let me just write down the various derivatives that are involved in the Euler Lagrange equations the first one being del L del q 1 dot that is differential with respect to q 1 dot we get 2 q 1 right q 2 q 1 dot and similarly del L del q 2 dot 
is also equal to we differentiate with respect to q 2 dot we get 2 q 2 dot right. So, so uh, well we do not have a square here we have a square here that is the problem. So, we get 2 times q 2 dot minus 1 right and then the other derivative we have to worry about is del l del q 1 which is del l del q 1 which is equal to 2 q 1 and del l del q 2 which is equal to uh, q 1 right. So, that is all what we have well del l del q 1 we have q 1 appearing here and q 1 appearing here. So, 2 q 1 plus q 2 right. So, these are the different uh, derivatives which are appearing in our Euler Lagrange and we are ready to write the system of Euler Lagrange. Uh, my Euler Lagrange for both the variables the first one after plugging in the values we get the first one is q 1 double dot minus q 1 minus half q 2 is equal to 0 and q 2 double dot minus half q 1 is equal to 0 right. So, then the next set of steps involve solving for q 1 and q 2 and the way to standard way to do that is to eliminate one of the variables. So, let us eliminate q 1 by differentiating the second equation twice with respect to t and substituting q 1 double dot from the second equation and what we get is an equation purely for q 2. So, we get the fourth derivative minus 2 q 2 dot double dot. Uh, minus half q 2 which is equal to 0 ok. So, then th the next step involved is we can look at an equation we can look at a solution for q 2 of the form let us say q 2 is of this form e to the power mu t we can plug this form here and we are going to get we are going to get a characteristic equation for mu which is polynomial. So, 2 mu 4 minus 2 mu square minus half is equal to 0 right. So, I have mu 1 comma 2. So, I have of course, this is a fourth order polynomial equation. We will expect four solutions. The first two solutions are as follows. Uh, this is also equal to plus minus square root of 1 by 2 plus 1 by square root 2 and we see that both these solutions are real and the second set of solutions are given by plus minus square root 1 by 2 minus 1 by square root 2 which is also equal to plus minus i m right. Uh, so, what I want to show here is that the second set of two equations are purely imaginary. So, it is you know i times some quantity which is a real which is a real number right where 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 my m is a real number ok. So, when we write when we plug all these values of q mu we are going to get that q 2 of t is equal to c 1 e to the power mu 1 of t plus c 2 e to the power we get the following linear combination. ok and we see that after plugging in after simplifying we we expect that uh, we expect that since the, the the third and the fourth solution they are occurring in complex conjugates we can always write the solution in the form of in the form of sin and cos right. So, I get that this is also equal to C 3 let me say that we will have a different constant altogether. So, C 3 prime e to the power well not E anymore cos of m t plus C 4 prime sin of m t right where these two are different set of constants than these two ok. And then of course, uh, where now we have got a family of extremals I can find the C i's are found from the boundary condition found from 
the boundary condition q bar of 0 is q 0 bar and q bar of 1 is q 1 bar and each of them are set of two equations. So, we have a total of four equations for four unknowns and that completes that completes the discussion of this example. Okay. So, then another example let us look at uh, let us look at a special case right. So, the special case is where L does not explicitly depend on T. So, of course, that is the case where we should have a Beltrami identity uh, instead of the full Euler Lagrange equation and that uh, identity must be the reduced order Euler Lagrange equation. Okay. So, in this special case L the integrand in the functional does not depend depend on on t explicitly right so i have that h is equal to summation from 1 to n which is qk dot del l del qk dot minus l right so this will be equal to a constant okay so this is so we see that when l does not contain explicitly the t the independent variable then this in this case the beltrami identity is of this following form where we have the summation over these variables q case uh, so so this is my beltrami identity 